Hello everyone and welcome to my presentation entitled Embolic Phenomena and Biventricular Heart Failure Due to Non-Valvular Infective Endocarditis in a Young Adult Intravenous Drug User. My name is Dr. Joshua Ronan. I am a third year internal medicine resident with Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center at the Permian Basin in Odessa, Texas. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the attendings listed who supported this project. This case describes a 29-year-old male intravenous drug user presenting with one and a half months of flu-like symptoms. Physical examination and lab results were suggestive of acute decompensated heart failure and septic embolization. Table 1, pictured in blue to the right side of the case presentation section, displays pertinent lab results. There was evidence of ischemia of the cerebrum on imaging, as well as the kidneys and digits with the available objective data. Chest x-ray was suggestive of interstitial edema versus pneumonia, and CT angiogram of the chest was negative for pulmonary embolism. Broad-spectrum IV antibiotics were started given underlying suspicion of infective endocarditis. Transthoracic echocardiogram demonstrated two left ventricular masses and severe left ventricular dysfunction. A left heart catheterization, abbreviated LHC, revealed normal coronaries. Non-ischemic cardiomyopathy was also confirmed with this exam, as well as a left ventricular ejection fraction of 15 to 20% and severe global hypokinesis. The patient's admitting diagnosis to the intensive care unit was acute hypoxic respiratory failure due to acute decompensated heart failure from lesions suspicious for underlying infective endocarditis. Given the size of each lesion detected, surgical management was undertaken. Cardiothoracic surgery was consulted, and before surgery, an intraoperative transesophageal echocardiogram was performed, as pictured in Figure 1. Figure 1 has two parts, a panel on the left and a panel on the right. In the panel on the left, we see LV clot number one, which is more apical and mobile, measuring 3.1 times 2.0 centimeters. And we have panel number two, picturing LV clot number two in the mid cavity, measuring 3.0 by 2.0 centimeters. Following the transesophageal echocardiogram intraoperatively, Surgery was performed for resection of the lesions found. Findings included friable cystic-like thrombi, as pictured in figure two with the surgical specimen. They were in the LV trabeculae with no real attachment points containing copious exudate. Due to refractory shock and the inability to wean off cardiopulmonary bypass intraoperatively, our cardiovascular specialist placed an impeller device, a right ventricular assist device. Refractory biventricular failure and complete dependence on the impeller device, running at 3.5 liters per minute, prompted transfer to a larger medical center for extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, or ECMO. The patient's LV function eventually recovered at the outside hospital. He was weaned off of all support devices, extubated, and started on goal-directed medical therapy for heart failure. In conclusion, the unorthodox location, size, and morphology of the lesions found in our patient have not been described in available literature on infective endocarditis. Transthoracic echo findings of vegetations greater than 15 millimeters with severe mobility are common predictors of embolic complications and mortality in 30% of patients, especially with left-sided infective endocarditis and involvement of a causative agent, more so staph Staphylococcus aureus. The principal cardiac complication of infective endocarditis is heart failure secondary to infection-induced aortic or mitral valve destruction. What is unusual in our patient is without valvular involvement, he still presented with acute decompensated heart failure. One out of every two patients might require right and or left ventricular assist devices in the setting of cardiogenic shock should there be considerable difficulty weaning them off of vasopressor support. For introductory information on infective endocarditis and its systemic complications, please reference the first two sections at the leftmost portion of this virtual poster. Thank you so much for listening.